interviews that led up to this, uh, heard, heard this report as well, and I'm really excited for this conversation, uh, for the report to be given and the conversation to follow. Uh, so I wanna introduce to you uh, Mika Vandersall and Dave Harder, our consultants, and would you join me in welcoming them? Thank you so much. It is a joy to be with you. Um, what an amazing uh, Sunday to be able to participate in 28 Young People Confirmed. Uh, not many churches we work with, see, we see that reality. So it's a joy to, to be here, it's a joy to be with you. Um, this faith community has become, over the last number of months, um, home for myself in many ways. Just the ways in which you are engaged and doing life and the joys um, of serving. Um, this congregation in what the future looks like. So, my name is Dave. Uh, I am from Ottawa, Canada, um, and have been working with churches, was a church planter for 21 years, and five years ago, uh, started working with churches, reimagining what it looks like to be the church moving into the future. Um, specifically, transitioning faith, property, faith assets for community impact. And one of the phrases that I use often is that if we continue to do the same things, we will spend the next 10 years managing the decline of the church. And we're seeing that continually. The narrative is of loss and less. And so we want to see that shift, that narrative change, and uh, we're hopeful in, um, on what uh, can happen um, today, but also into the future. Mika. I'm so grateful to meet many of you who I've spoken with um, over these past months face to face. We we all we have bodies. We're not just Zoom screens. And it's really it's a real good gift that we have the bodies that we have here. Um, my name is Mika. I'm the principal consultant at Anderson Collective. I am also a Presbyterian pastor. I am a church planter as well. Um, and uh, the work that we do is, um, I'm here from New York City uh, here today, and we um, engage in work around uh, strategic thinking, communication, and fundraising, knowing that these three pieces uh, must be intact for uh, faithful success. And it has been an incredible gift over the last, I don't know, Dave, yeah, I, I mean, I, the COVID time, it's just awfully confusing to me. But two and a half years or something like that, that we've been in conversation with you all, um, and uh, the, especially last uh, fall um, and winter in the work that we've been able to do together. We are uh, going to spend um, some significant time talking about the report that we bring to you, which is a reflection of you. And um, we hope to do this not in a we talk and you listen kind of way. I mean, you are going to listen and we are going to talk. <laughs> we'll do a lot of talking. We'll be doing a lot of talking. But we're, we'll be using those markers on the table and you all will be having small group conversations amongst yourselves as well. Um, so uh, we thank you in advance for your collaboration um, in this conversation. At the end, we will have uh, some time for questions and answers where we'll, we'll really um, ask, ask we'll, we'll channel your questions, first around process and, and um, then around noticing and then other, other questions as well. I think we have about an hour or so is what we're kind of, we'll, we'll see. You know, we're going to see, yeah. <laughs> Depends on how chatty you all are. Um, okay, so. We also have an executive summary that will be sent out to you all afterwards. It's intentionally not on your tables because we don't want your head like this in the paper the whole time. So you'll get this afterwards and, and you'll be able to read it and there will be opportunities for more conversation, we promise. So first, how are you showing up today? It's an exciting morning. How are you showing up in this space? What we would like you to do is take your markers and don't use words. Just use colors or shapes or drawings. And I'm not, a, I'm not an artist myself. I find this to be really tough. But it's really good to be able to get this, this out. So use those markers and draw out your fears, your dreams, your expectations, your joys. Don't use words. Just take a few minutes and do that. No judging yourself and no overthinking. Yeah. <laughs> 
so much live into our mind. What are you feeling? What are those thoughts that are emerging for you? Yeah, draw those down. Continue moving forward. How a story starts is really important to how it also ends. And so there's a narrative that we have been working with um, on how this work uh, has started and kind of the stops and, and stutters along the way. In the fall of 2019, we received a letter um, from the Horizons team at the time. And they were looking for a partner to help them work through some crucial conversations and decisions. We're making some decisions around property and land and realize that we don't know the deeper why of who we are, the purpose in which we're living into. So how can we make this big of a decision? So we were invited, we um, got on an airplane and came and spent time um, presenting and, and uh, um, working through what, uh, what a proposal could look like for us to engage um, in that work. And right after that, I flew to New York City and we were excited to begin working together and a week later, I am on lockdown with COVID and the realities of that happening. What happens then to a contract when you're trying to move forward with reimagining something and now there's this world that is uncertain? What is church going to look like? And we pull back. And so this is a moment for churches to figure things out. What does online look like? And what does how we meet and connect in this new reality? So we re-engaged. Um, back in the fall, and in re-engaging, realized the initial questions that you were asking were now not the questions that needed to be asked. There was a shift. COVID presented challenges. Um, there was staff changes that are happening with Pastor Steve's retirement, and there was this, who are we? Yes, but what does next look like for us? How do we reimagine the future of who we are? So that is the story of how we started the process, one of disruption, but also one of shifting. It's really important to be clear about what you're doing so that you know how to measure success, so you're able to have some base that you're able to respond to. So we organized our work in several phases. First, we had to have a core committee, a steering committee, um, to receive um, things that we had been working on to give us feedback, to help us think through what it was that we were doing, to be our creative partners in this process. I think many of you know who those folks are, but um, as I read your name, could you stand up? Steve Samides was, of course, you know, our fearless leader on the steering, the steering team. And we have uh, the other Steve, Steve Hervey. Um, <laughs> Georgia Brusso as well. I don't know where George is. Probably in the back making more food. Yeah, she's probably making more food. Chris, <coughs> your congregational president, or whatever it is, I don't know if we say that. Um, Mike Rapke. Is Mike here today? I know he had two compliments today. And um, we were also supported by Holly Wolfman, of course. Thanks, Steve. Um, so we were, of course, supported by Holly Wolfman. So these are the people who we have grown very close to over the past many, many months um, in our work together. Um, we then introduced ourselves to the congregation in that small moment where you all went uh, back only online uh, due to Omicron 1, I think it was. So we, uh, we recorded the video, we were with you online in worship, we uh, worshiped through uh, Zoom or YouTube or whatever it was that day. And um, uh, that was our initial kind of attempt at uh, beginning to understand who you are as a worshiping community. We also received countless, countless, countless uh, newsletters, annual reports, Sunday bulletins, um, committee minutes, the full um, uh, property report that uh, was done before, before COVID as well. And we began to immerse ourselves in your vocabulary, how you speak about yourselves, how you think about the world, and began to look at um, themes that were emerging from there. <laughs> 
We interviewed 19 individuals, not only members of First Congregational, but also members of the community, to see how you're perceived by others and how you perceive yourselves. We began to study that, that vocabulary and the, uh, the language uh, that you use to describe yourselves, and began to look for areas of opportunity as well. We did a congregational survey, which I hope many of you, I know many of you participated in, because we had uh, close to 200 survey respondents. And the depth of engagement in those surveys was profound. You all were really, really engaged. You answered questions. Um, you said things that were easy, and you said things that were hard. And we appreciate uh, the work that you put into that, the opening of your hearts to that. We also led, prepared and led two online retreats with uh, 19 participants as well. Um, and um, those were really transformative times for us. Um, and I think for those, I, I mentioned to say, who are on retreat with us. Um, and we conducted data analysis of the immediate and wider neighborhood in the community in Fox Valley. This was something that was done by our colleague Dave Presto, who's not here with us today. It was a quantitative analysis. You'll hear a little bit more about what he found around the emerging community um, in Appleton in the Fox Valley. And we explored uh, potential development options for the property. We met with the mayor of Appleton and city planners. We looked at the larger plan for city of Appleton and what that looks like. This, and by, us, by saying the city of Appleton, it's also, of course, the surrounding um, towns that are around you. Um, when we were here, however many months ago, we took a tour um, of the city with the city planner and, um, and uh, to talk about potential development opportunities. Measures of success. The work that we did with the steering committee um, was really, um, we, we had to begin by talking about what success was. And here are some of the things that the steering committee came up with. That, they, that we tap into the voice of the congregation, so it's a collective voice at the end of this, more than just their individual voices. That we have large scale conversations about the future. That we um, in, engage people broadly. Um, that we use this as an opportunity to think differently about where we want to be. This is not just about reproducing how we have been, but perhaps digging deeper into who we are and thinking differently about the future. That we dig into property and neighborhoods so that we can change our mission and vision um, and take advantage of the opportunity that, that you all have right now. That you preserve tradition but are open to new ideas at the same time and that there's excitement at the end of this process. Yes. Still. Still. OK. So what we found. First, we'll go through our, our findings, and then we will um, have another prompt for you, and then we'll move into our <coughs> recommendations. Once we get through these findings, you probably could write the recommendations yourselves. Um, so, uh, but better than you the first thing we found is that without exceptions, uh, there, it, around engagement and care, without exception, our interactions with this community um, has left us with the clarity that there is great energy at First Congregational. You can feel that so deeply here today with you all in worship and in this space. At times, it's nervous energy. I'm not going to lie. There's a, there's a bit of nervousness around what is next. What does that look like? Um, uh, with all the transitions that you all have. But the gift of having energy is not to be underestimated and is not something we find in many places. Uh, the next thing we found is you are resource rich. When we're embedded in our own reality and kind of doing and engaging committees and the activities of the church and maintaining the building and all the things, we somehow can get lost into how are we seen, how are we, we viewed, but also the gifts amongst us. And if one just in this room itself, there is so many um, resources, strengths, assets, passions, capacities in this space. You carry a tremendous resource in who you are as individuals and the collective strengths that you carry. You're also resource rich within the community. The social capital that you have built, the ways in which you are viewed by those outside of this space um, is remarkable. The interviews that we would share, we would have, and the ways in which people would share about who you are was very, very exciting. 
um, discovering their love for you, the work you do in the community, and the ways um, in which you are engaged in the Fox Valley. You have a lot of social capital in this community. You also are resource rich within the land and the space in which you have. What does it look like for that space to become stewarded as a resource for the community um, to serve the needs that it also carries? People are nervous. I wonder if that nervousness has shifted since we did our work together in the fall as you're getting closer to Pastor Steve's retirement and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to be okay and you'll live through this and Pastor Steve will even live through this and you'll be okay on the other end of this. But in reviewing the fears for the future, that was one of the questions that was asked in the survey. People said over and over that you're dancing on the head of a proverbial pin. Many know that change is required. Change because you are just changing, but change because in mainline Protestantism, what used to be is not it is not now. That's right. What it means to belong, what it what church means, is different. Is changing. There's excitement around that, but it's hard to know what's next without being able to see it. So there's a lot of nervousness around. We know we've got to go somewhere, but what is it and how? We found that your culture is largely defined by what you do and the value of excellence. The appreciation for excellent preaching and excellent music and excellent worship, excellent food. Um, there's a way in which you serve within the community that is done with excellence. It's a culture that has been developed here. This is a blessing, but it's also a curse. The blessing is your ability to, to organize at large scale. If there's a need in the neighborhood, you can rally around and you can meet that need. You can organize around opportunities. But what excellence also does is it, it prevents us from being sometimes. The vulnerability of just being together, holding space, observing and noticing the cracks and the messiness, that it just happens when we just hold space together without the needing to perform, without the needing to do. Success for you comes in the doing. You define success by doing rather than being. In your doing, the service, the ways in which you serve the community and one another is great. But within the doing, we can also miss that relational connection, the being together. Your purpose is connected to the open door. You all know your timeline really well and reiterated it back to us again and again and again. And there's pride in that tagline, the church of the open door. However, when we begin